So being born as an Iranian, uh, I grew up with rocks. I probably, I, the first time I crawled on rocks, and I started walking on rocks. And it's something that I learned by osmosis as I grew up. And when I came to New York to pay for my education, I used to work uh, in restoration of antique rocks. That's where I learned to appreciate um, how these uh, treasures were made. I am the designer, um, the manufacturer, and I also am the importer. Well, the pattern, I mean, you can, you know, you can start designing you know, any, any rugs, even on an 8 by 11 sheet of paper or in a graph paper, or you can even take a picture um, and map it to the graph, and that is reprinted or redrawn on a graph paper which is the size of the rock so every grid representing a knot in the rock I get inspiration from my traveling and I get it from nature and visiting a beautiful place I remember when I went to Morocco looking at all these palaces or um, old architecture I, mean, I was so inspired to um, make rugs looking at all the, all the uh, carving on the walls, the mosaics and the tiles. And looking at the nature, I get my colors. Um, I think it's very challenging that if you can match uh, a sunset. I mean, imagine you have a sunset in your living room. You can look at it every day, something that reminds you of that. And uh, or look at a different color of a leaf and be able to um, you know, bring that into your rug. And these are the th inspiration that I get either from the, for designs or for the colors on my rugs. This is a beautiful room and there's something missing. Beautiful furniture, old antique floor, but it looks naked. I'm going to show you by bringing a rug that has all the colors, but an undertone and what a magic it does for the room. This is a rug that I designed, my inspiration was an Agra design, and it's a classic rug, and also it's a focal point of the room. Now let's look at other rugs and see how it changes the ambience of the room. As you can see, we brought the garden into the home. It's very summery, very fresh, very casual, and that's the feeling you get when you come to this room. And again, it proves how you can change the ambience of the room with a rock. This beautiful rug was inspired by Renaissance design. As you can see, this tone-on-tone -tone color gives the room more of a modern feeling. And also it works in the room and it makes a focal point. This rug is an agro inspired by an 18th century agro Indian design. It's red, gold, beautiful. And the spirit of it is, is basically nurturing. It's a room that you want to go 
and the day that you need to be by yourself, look at the fireplace and to be alone. And that's the spirit of the room. That's what it gives you. Wool is what really makes the rug. Wool is what is the is what uh, carries or shows the the dye that you're using. So it's important to have a good wool, and of course good dye. A good wool which you preserve the lanolin in that, and you have not uh, chemically treated the wool, so it's going to really um, give that uh, luminescent quality to it. Every a strand of the wool is almost like a piece of glass. I mean, it's just so luminescent and shows the color beautifully. How is a rug made? Well, it depends on the type of a rug. There are different ways of weaving it, there are flat weave rugs, there are pile rugs. So the pile rugs, which is also on the loom, but has a weft and a warp. So the technique is knotting every little color in the design and they go in rows so and every row that it's finished it goes on top of it uh, two lines of wefts and then they start another rows of knots and just keep continuing until they finish the rugs machine made rugs they're not uh, de well defined so if you look at the flower in a machine made rug some of them are kind of fuzzy versus a hand knotted rug it's very um, well-defined around the edges so it can create more um, realistic shape of a flower or a leaf uh, in, in the hand knotted rug versus the machine rug. Well hand woven rug is the labor, is the labor of love and I believe because of that it's always going to have a resale value. It, it's a dying art as we uh, go into future. I'm not afraid of teaching this art and I would be more than happy to educate you know my my customers and I think an educated con uh, consumer is the best customer and I would like to help this dying art and um, hopefully I can make it uh, live a uh, few more years if I could do that